bed set. The Beddington Zero Energy development in England is an amazing project built over two decades ago. You can cherry pick the most successful, money saving and genuinely transformative strategies to transform your own home right now. So forget the greenwashing. This is about real world results 20 years later. If you're ready to learn how to potentially half your energy bills, create a more comfortable home and genuinely future proof your renovation, like this video and listen up. To understand what worked and what didn't, we first need to rewind to the early 2000s when Bedzet was just a bold idea. Bill Dunster Architects, working with Bioregional, set out to create 100 homes in South London that would be truly carbon neutral. This wasn't just about sticking on a few solar panels, this was a holistic, integrated approach to sustainable living. And the design features they incorporated were nothing short of revolutionary at the time. Let's start with what's their most iconic visual element, the wind cowls for passive ventilation. They make an ingenious system designed to pull fresh air into homes and expel stale air without the need for noisy, energy intensive mechanical ventilation. They passively harness the wind and convection currents, creating a constant gentle air exchange. It's brilliant in theory, fresh air, natural cooling and zero energy consumption. I'll explain later if they delivered up to the hype, but visually they obviously made a statement about BedZ's commitment to cutting edge eco-design. And maybe even more fundamental to their energy goals was super insulation. In the early 2000s, standard UK homes might have had around 100 mil of insulation in their walls. BedZ? Well, they went for a crazy 300 millimeters in their walls and roofs. This is three times the thickness. It's not just an upgrade, it's a complete paradigm shift. The idea was simple, but very effective. Create an incredibly well-sealed, firm and efficient envelope that just doesn't leak heat. If heat can't escape in the winter, and excessive heat can't get in during the summer, you drastically reduce the need for artificial heating and cooling. This was a core principle of passive design, making the building itself the primary energy saver and complementing that super insulation with the south-facing conservatories for passive solar gain. Every home at Bedzed is oriented to maximise its exposure to the sun. On the south side, many feature these glazed sun spaces or conservatories. During the day, and especially in winter, these spaces act like giant solar collectors. The sun's energy heats them up, and that warmth can then be drawn into the main living areas, providing free heating. In the summer, carefully designed shading and natural ventilation prevent overheating. It's a beautifully simple concept that harnesses one of the most abundant free resources we have. And although I can't see it, it's sunlight. These three features, the wind cowls, the super thick insulation and these clever south facing conservatories, have formed the basis of BedZ's ambitious promise of carbon neutral living. But did these ambitious designs actually even work? And what happens when pioneering technology meets the realities of everyday life? Let's jump 20 years later back to now and find out. 20 years is a long time in building science. Technologies evolve, residents live, learn and sometimes break things. So what did a comprehensive review of BedZ's performance actually reveal? Well, the results are interesting. A mix of incredible successes, a few critical failures, and some unexpected triumphs. Remember that super insulation and passive solar gain? They absolutely delivered. Residents at BedZ use a staggering 81% less energy for heating than people living in a typical home conventionally built, probably like you. Residents at BedZ use a staggering 81% less energy for heating than people living in a typical conventionally built home. Just, just think about that for a second. If heating is your biggest energy bill component, cutting it by over 80% is mental. It's not just a marginal improvement, it was a complete radical shift in energy consumption, proving that core principles of passive design, insulation, air tightness, solar orientation are incredibly powerful. This alone makes BedZ a 
monumental success in thermal efficiency. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing. There was a significant, well-documented failure, the biomass combined heat and power plant. The original vision for BedZ included a local wood chip fueled CHP plant. The idea was brilliant. Generate both electricity and heat from a renewable local source, creating a truly closed loop energy system. Technical issues plagued the plant from the start. It was unreliable, difficult to maintain, and ultimately it was decommissioned and replaced with a conventional gas boiler system. This was a painful, expensive lesson. It showed that while the concept of local renewable energy is vital, the specific technology has to be robust, it has to be reliable, and it has to be well supported, especially when it's pioneering. This was obviously a major blow to their carbon neutral goal as they had to revert to fossil fuels for heat and imported electricity. But with that massive technical hiccup, something truly unexpected exceeded all expectations. Resident satisfaction and their sense of community. While the engineers might have been tearing their hair out over the CHP plants, the residents themselves were thriving. Surveys consistently show incredibly high satisfaction levels while living at BedZ. The design, with its shared green spaces, the pedestrian-friendly layouts, the focus on community interaction, fostered a genuine sense of belonging. People actually knew their neighbours, they participated in community activities, and they felt a strong connection to their environment. I feel that this is a crucial, often overlooked aspect of sustainable development. It's not just about bricks and mortar, it's about creating places where people genuinely want to live and connect. BedZ proved that eco-living doesn't have to mean sacrificing quality of life. In fact, it can actually enhance it dramatically. And while I'm talking of enhancements, let's talk about the bottom line. Energy bills. Residents pay 50% less than the UK average. Despite the CHP plant failure, the overall energy performance, driven by that incredible insulation and passive design, means beds and residents are saving a lot of money. Halving your energy bills is a massive financial relief, especially in today's climate of rising costs. It's important to remember that that isn't just a statistic, it's a testament to the fact that investing in passive design principles pays off year after year directly into your pocket. This is maybe the most compelling argument for adopting some of BedZ's strategies. So you've seen the brilliance of the original design, the astonishing success in heating reduction and community building. You've also seen the painful but valuable lessons learned from the technological failures. Now for the most important part of this video, how do you take 20 years of learning and apply them to your own renovations or upgrades? Well, one thing you can do is look at passive ventilation strategies if you live in a terraced house particularly. The principle of passive ventilation is incredibly valuable. Terraced houses particularly often suffer from poor air quality and overheating in summer, especially in upstairs rooms you can mimic BedZ's approach by prioritising cross-ventilation. If possible, consider adding openable windows or vents on opposite sides of the house, for example the front and back bedrooms. This is going to allow the air to flow through. Even strategically placed internal louvre doors can help. You can also utilise the stack effect. Hot air rises. In a terraced house you can encourage warm stale air to exit through high level openings like a roof light and a loft conversion or a high level vent. This will then draw the cooler fresh air from lower level windows into the building. You can also look at simple venting. For less invasive options look into installing controlled background trickle vents in windows or walls, particularly in wet rooms like bathrooms and kitchens. This will maintain a constant low level air exchange. Mechanical ventilation heat recovery systems are an option for tightly sealed homes. 
But for passive airflow, think smart window and smart vent placement. Another thing you can look at is the fact that BedZ made extensive use of reclaimed or recycled materials, showcasing that sustainability isn't just about new tech, but an intelligent use of existing resources. I personally feel that reclaimed bricks don't just look beautiful, they add a sense of character and a sense of history. They also have the added benefit of reducing the environmental impact associated with manufacturing new materials. You can look for materials like this at your local builders merchants. You can look at online marketplaces, demolition contractors and specialist architectural salvage yards. Always make sure you get enough for your project, as matching later can be pretty difficult. And check the quality, because you want them structurally sound. Super insulation is BedZ's most undeniable success, and it's completely transferable to your home. Remember that 300mm of insulation, you don't really need to go that extreme, but significantly upgrading your insulation is the single best investment you can make for comfort and long-term energy savings, most likely. Depending on the size of your home, the chosen insulation, whether it's mineral wool or wood fibre, and whether you're insulating walls, a roof or a floor, the upfront cost can be fairly expensive. But you need to consider the bed Z lesson. It might be able to save you over £800 per year on your energy bills. Over 10 to 15 years, you can recoup your initial amount of money put in and then every year after that, it's basically free money in your pocket. But don't just think about the money, think about the comfort. No more cold spots, no more drafts, a stable internal temperature all year round. It's a game changer for living quality. You can look at loft insulation, wall insulation, floor insulation is essential if you have uh, suspended timber floors, as a lot of heat can escape there. But remember, before starting, get a professional energy assessment to identify the biggest heat loss areas in your specific home. So that's the bed set experiment 20 years later. A brave pioneering vision that, despite a few bumps along the road, has ultimately proven the immense potential of sustainable design and that you can do the same for your home. I hope you found this video useful or interesting. If you want to watch something else that I've made, here's a video about a green building you'll enjoy.